if I don't expect myself to be perfect, then I don't see my lack of knowledge or incompetence or ignorance as a negative. It's a situation, a condition I just need to deal with. Bill Wilson, co-founder of Alcoholics Anonymous, wrote in 1952, if we examine every disturbance we have, great or small, we will find at the root some unhealthy dependence and its consequent demand. Wilson suggested that if we could identify and continually surrender these unrealistic and unrealizable demands, that we may then be able to accomplish what he imagined to be the recovery's next frontier, something he called emotional sobriety. Flash forward 70 years and join psychotherapists and best-selling authors Tom Rutledge and Dr. Alan Berger, who have taken up the mantle of exploring Bill Wilson's new frontier. Welcome to Emotional Sobriety. Welcome to Emotional Sobriety, the podcast, the, 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 the next step in recovery. I'm Tom Rutledge, and I'm, I'm with uh, my my brilliant colleague, Dr. Alan Berger, and our uh, also brilliant uh, producer, uh, uh, Patrick Newman. I've had COVID. I noticed I had a little memory lapse. I forgot your name there for a minute, Patrick, but it's, it's COVID. I'm going to blame everything on COVID for a while. I would do that. I think that's, <laughs> first of all, Tom, it's so great to have you back. And, and I'm sorry you've been so sick. And it's amazing how sick you can get when you're chocked full of vaccine. <laughs> I'm, I'm just Imagine what you would have would have happened. Oh, you? I I mean, it's really gonna, this is going to fit in. This is going to fit into our to our topic today too, because I mean, talk about simultaneously feeling like shit and being filled with gratitude. It's like, yeah, because the, the, it was it was it. Really, I don't think it ever really lo- left me that that you know, and just in terms of compassion for everyone who's had this and who have everyone who had it. Uh, and I know you, you had it, but you, you, you had it before vaccines, right? I had it once before and once after, and there was a yeah. noticeable difference. Wow. Noticeable. The first time, because I know that the first time you, you, when you talked about it, it's like you had, you had some of those symptoms that just would not go away. I was telling Patrick before we got on the air today that, that those residual symptoms lasted, I think up to a year for me, fatigue, fog, a, foggy mental mm-hmm. cognition right i mean forgetful i would forget things that i'm i'm usually i have a pretty decent i mean that's scary i mean you know we make jokes about stuff like that all the time but that's scary for us i mean i'm not saying it's scary for other people but it's like it's like you know if you know if we if we have we have a skill set it's it's in our minds and it's like you know when 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 uh, uh you know I, i'd be okay if i can't walk very well but it's it's like i I need to think. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're all still standing. How are you doing, Patrick? Oh, I, I got sick too. I was doing some traveling to see uh, friends and I was just kind of dogpiling, like, you know, just wrapping up business with different kind of like uh, friends and, you know, business partners and, uh, and moving and shaking and, and, and also preparing for uh, my girlfriend to move in, uh, mm-hmm. you know, a big life event and just mm-hmm. managed in the travel to get super sick. Um, took uh, three subsequent antigen tests for COVID. They all came up, came up negative. So um, I'm not sold on uh, the bug I caught having been COVID, but no matter whatever it is, it's just really knocked me down the last week. And, and this has been our moving week. So loading trucks and just like, and you know what I was going to, I was going to try to dovetail this into our theme for today because um, I, uh, I found it very difficult to stay present. I found it very difficult to stay on the ball and to, uh, you know, navigating the interpersonal conflict with my partner um, as, as, uh, as my body was failing me. And, uh, mm-hmm. and, you know, I, uh, I just really think that for me, I mean, the, the notion of presence really comes into play. Like when, when I'm, th- when, when I'm uh, in conflict with others and, I just have a fight or flight kind of like, I just want to, I just want to not have this conversation. I just want to go to another room and then never resume actually just, you know, <laughs> just not be in the, in the hurt right. locker. Well, well that's, and Alan, I bet you have, I bet you have this experience too. I mean, one of the, one of the tools that, that in terms of working with, with, uh, 
people with communication issues that we have all the time is, 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 you know, it is important to be able, everybody to have the, have the ability to call a timeout. But the rule that goes with that is that if you call the timeout, you have to call it the time back in. And, and, and it's like, yeah, that, that's the one that comes up. It's, it's like, you know, the, the, the fear from the other person is always going to be, well, yeah, that he or she may, may say, you know, I need a little break here, but I, you know, the reason why, why do I keep talking? Well, because I, because I don't trust that they're going to come back to this conversation. And so it, you know, in, 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 the, the, in case we haven't just said it, the, to me, the, the topic today is be here now, basically. It's Ram Dash. It's like it's, it's be, be in the present tense. Certainly the emotional sobriety focus has, has helped me with this. And this is the difference. We're not talking about something when we say be in the present moment, live in the present moment. That's, and I think this is the way with hindsight that I looked at it before, which is, which is that's a really great idea. That's a really good concept. That's a good thing to keep in mind. Well, as I go through my life, you know, it's like, and I think what I've gotten, and I don't know, uh, sometimes it feels, sometimes it feels like some of this stuff just comes because I've, I've gotten older, but it's, it's like, no, it's not just a good idea. It is, it goes back to this thing we talk about all the time. Practice is no, it's something that I need to be, you know, that I do well, I do better in my life. I am where I need to be when I am practicing it on a, on a moment to moment basis, a day to day basis. And that's extremely hard as a human being impossible to do all the time, but it's, it's, but going to what you're saying, Patrick, is it goes back to that little nutshell I have from years ago is, which is anybody can have a good day on a good day. And I mean, so we can translate that to anybody can have a good moment on a good moment. The idea is when, when you're saying you're having conflict and you're having trouble staying in the moment, when I was in the midst of feeling this bad with, with COVID stuff, it's like, I, I, that was not lost on me. I was thinking about, about, you know, okay, well, everything I'm learning, everything I'm supposed to be doing is, is go into this moment, you know, breathe it in, be, be here with this. It's like, uh, uh-uh. well, I, I found lots more resistance in there saying, let's get out of here. I don't like, I don't like the now. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I went into a uh, worm mode. I, I think I'm going to call it, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, you know, the, the least heroic. And, uh, you know, I, I was literally, we were moving boxes into the, the moving truck and we, we'd hired a couple movers, but they, you know, we had them for a set amount of time. And then when they were off the clock, I had to kick in and like move a bunch of heavy shit into the U-Haul. And I'll, I just like for a good par- part of the morning, I just hid in the car and just like <laughs> sweated and just, you know, and, <laughs> and just, you know, like, like the, the exact opposite of how I want to look in front of my significant other. M- right. Most right. Times. And uh, I, so I guess, I guess having a, having a good day on a bad day, that yeah. is uh, where the emotional That's, sobriety comes in. Right. Absolutely. It is. It's like, where, 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 where's Patrick? It's like, he, I think he's in the trunk. It's like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Or yeah. in one of the boxes, he clawed in the boxes. <laughs> Oh, that was good, been good, good, hi- good hiding place. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that next time. <laughs> prepare. Yes. And, and if you're, and, and those of you listening, if you're going to use that, uh, be sure you prepare a box ahead of time with, with, you right. know, with some, some comforts, you know, a, a pillow, some snacks, you know, things like that. <laughs> <laughs> so that. So that you can be in the box in the present moment. That sounds very appealing. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, um, uh, Anyway, I, I appreciate you guys being uh, say, saying yes to, to the idea of talking about the present moment because is there's always that part of me that just says, well, it's, you know, it's, it's obvious, you know, and it's like it's, it's almost cliche, but it's like it's everything. Let's define it a little bit because okay. you're right, Tom, because I think that that when we talk about staying in the now, what does that really mean and what does that include? So we could say... Mm-hmm includes everything that's happening right now which it does Mm -hmm. sometimes means now is not exclusive of thinking about the future sometimes it includes that now is not exclusive of the past because it's clearly you know that who we are is informed by our past and how we look at things and how we're experiencing things you know we talk about the consciousness that we have and that consciousness really is the filter that we have that how we interpret our experience, the meaning we give to it, all of these things. So the now is a very, very rich experience. And it's not, and when we say now, we talk about it like it's a thing, but now is always moving to next. 
Right. There's no, no that, that's the, two, two, two things. It was well, one is uh, there was a there was a, a woman in a workshop of mine that I did probably decades ago now that, that came up with it. somebody asked the question we were talking about. We were talking about um, one day at a time and in, 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 in the recovery uh, program. And and somebody asked the question, what about people who use that as an excuse? You know, it's like who don't, you know, and, and it's it's like it was a great question. And it's like, and I and I babbled around about saying this, this, but then this, then the then the woman uh in the in the uh, uh in the group said said this, and I and I and I know this is exactly what she said because I wrote it down and I've been repeating it ever since. And the only the only regret I have is I do not know her name. And, I, and I, if I had known I was gonna be using, I'd be quoting her. But she said, planning, planning for the future and and uh learning from the past are both present tense experiences mm. it's exactly what you just described alan it's like planning for the future learning from the past now yeah. dwelling dwelling in the past is not is not learning from the past yeah. you know and and fretting about the future is is not planning for the future planning is an active movement so i love that and i also just realized from the present moment you're i'm always learning as we're talking is our present self, we are always, uh, we do, we, because this is one of the big things about emotional sobriety for me that's been a life changer is that, you know, we know that we have, we always have choice about how we respond outwardly to, to what's going on. But we focus so much on the, not only the power to do this, but the, but the responsibility to respond internally intrapersonally with choosing how we're going to interpret we interpret the world from the now and then the other word that came to my mind and, and then from there we navigate and that involves learning and planning no it's it, what you're saying is 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 really that's why i'm saying we got to define what this now looks like mm -hmm. so that people understand it it's it's very inclusive Right. It's very, it's, all, it's, it's always because we could use the, a synonym for the now we're using now is always. Yeah. There you go. That's a, that's, that's a nice way to say it. And I, I couldn't agree more with you. You know, one of my favorite nutshells that you have and that mm -hmm. I got exposed mm -hmm. to very early on when I, when we started working together, I think you made it into a little button or something like that. Mm -hmm. I've got it somewhere. I've, and it mm -hmm. was um, learn from your past Mm -hmm. and get the hell out of there <laughs> get the hell out of there it's it's, <laughs> it's it, to me it, it, you captured so much of the mm -hmm. essence mm -hmm. of healthy behavior right mm -hmm. is that we process our experience we learn from it. now we could ask ourselves what keeps us from the now what mm -hmm. keeps us from living in the now in a healthy way right instead of right. in a in what we used to call a neurotic way right mm -hmm. i mean Mm -hmm. You can be in the now filled with anxiety and filled with, with <laughs> dread and filled with, yes. you, know, you know, depression and, and you know, all kinds of things. And, and look, sometimes that is a now. And if I'm feeling anxious, the way I deal with it is say, I'm anxious right now. <laughs> I'm aware that I'm anxious. What are, now, what does that mean? What's going on? And see, this is the difference. What am I doing that's making me anxious? What mm -hmm. part of me? How am I contributing? How am I contributing to this experience I'm having right now? Yeah. How am I interpreting the experience I'm having right now? Because if I'm anxious, it's it's very likely I'm interpreting whatever is happening as a threat, mm -hmm. as a threat to my existence. And see, that's where the anxiety yes. comes in. And so sometimes when I start to unpack that, well, it's not a threat to my existence. It's a threat to my ego. <laughs> I mean, right, so mm -hmm. the, the word that keeps coming up for me is humility mm -hmm. yes. and uh, is, is what humility, What's the word? humility. Yeah. <laughs> um, because oddly enough, um, if I have humility, if I'm making a mistake, if I'm not being particularly present in a situation, but I can stop and kind of like arrest that impulse and kind of like take stock of, OK, this is maybe where I'm airing. This is where I'm off course a little bit and then bring myself back to the center that's a much uh that's a much better way of staying present and practicing self self-care than this kind of like ego rescue that we do when we're um in a conflict with somebody right and uh the what i found myself doing the other day was uh well you know why why uh why am why am i not seeing any gratitude for x y and z that i've done so spectacularly why are we focusing on <laughs> the areas where i uh fucked up 
You know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, why can't you, uh, you know, why can't my ego be satisfied just to, to pull me out of this hot water? When if I was practicing humility, that'd be a much better way, I think, of just, you know, uh, course correcting, um, taking account and just being, you know, being a better person and, and uh, mo- moving ahead in a healthier manner. If that all makes sense. I don't know. Well, look, at, and this is where, mm-hmm. you know, you know, this is, I just love how all this stuff starts to intersect, right? Mm-hmm. So it intersects with this idea that we've been talking about lately about self-concept and self-esteem. And just mm-hmm. to remind listeners that self-esteem is the self-evaluative component of self-concept. So our self-concept is I am Alan. My self-esteem is my evaluation of who Alan is. Do I? How do I see myself? How do I think of myself? Do I like myself? Do I not like myself? It's all of those kinds of things. That's what self-esteem is. So it becomes an interesting thing. It's like what you're talking about, Patrick, is when you introduce humility into the concept of, let's say, a healthy self-esteem being being based in authenticity and humility, then the issue becomes one of, can I say and criticize myself, you know, I'm not very good at this. I'm incompetent in this area and still have self-esteem. And the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. Because if I don't expect myself to be perfect, then I don't see my lack of knowledge or incompetence or ignorance as a negative. It's a situation, a condition I just need to deal with. Self-esteem is is going to be better when we are when we are congruent with reality. When we're you know, so if, if Patrick is in is is hiding in the car, and he's feeling <laughs> like shit, okay, and, and and he not only feels like shit physically, he, he you know, he you know he, he knows he knows oh well this you know this this is gonna re- this is really not going to be you know impressive to Maddie. It's like it's like it's like like so I'm I'm here. It's like what do, what do we suggest that he do? Well, we we might ultimately suggest that he get out of the car and go be some be helpful but it's like but even before that is like okay well this is so here you are in the middle of being what you kind of can feel like is kind of your shitty self where you're just you're just coming up way short and this uh, so let's just be there let's own it just it's just you it's like and, and to me what that does is it takes even if i can't get rid of the should the the should monster in my head I can back, you can pan back to another layer and you can go there. I am beating the crap out of myself in the car. Okay. That's honest. And it's a step toward it's, and it's a step toward toward, it's it. And it's accurate. See, what I find is to be accurate of our appraisal of ourselves is more important than it be this or that. Because only when we're accurate, we do we get to learn from the past and and get the hell out of there. We only with accuracy, can we actually improve ourselves? You know, if I could do that day over, I think what I would do is um, press forward in my hobbled state and not and and just subtract that aspect of like, okay, I'm clearly not at my best. I'm not going to be able to come through in in this situation Mm -hmm. to the extent that I really I want to be seen coming through (laughs) and Mm -hmm. I and I and, and, you know, uh, you know, lifting these heavy boxes up and down stairs, you know, uh, uh, you know, for uh, multiple hours of the day, which is what it ultimately took. And just kind of do a little piece at a time, look really stupid and weak while doing it, sit down, take long rests, uh, (laughs) drink water, you know, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I just like, I think that there was a a bit of a a, a heavy dose of ego mixed in with uh, this situation because, uh, you know, I wasn't expecting to be knocked on my ass that day. And I was uh, dur- during game time. And, and you uh, were offended. Yeah. You were, I mean, yeah. that's the thing. We get offended at these things. We, I mean, we, I mean, I realized that when I was, when I was talking about our, our illnesses here, but it's like, is, is, is that, you know, Didi, Didi had, had gotten COVID first, gotten tested positive. So I was trying to be really careful, but I thought, you know, here it comes, but it's like, I still re- recognize the experience of being offended when I, when I, you know, it's like, no, not me. <laughs> you know, talk, and again, you have ego when it comes to like a virus. Yeah. I mean, how insane is that? It's yeah. human. Yeah. 
Yeah, see, Patrick, I was thinking if you had it to do over, you would have hired the guys for another couple hours. <laughs> yeah, I really should have done that. I yeah. know. I'm, it's not a should have. But see, that's the stuff is when we get fixed on this is how it's going to be. Mm-hmm. We lose. <laughs> yeah, we lose the flexibility. And when we lose the flexibility, it's impossible to creatively respond to the situation. Right. As yes. soon as you're fixed that this is the way it's going to be, this is the way I'm going to be, this is the way it has to be, now you're screwed. Yeah. Especially if you're not able to support what you'd like to have happen at the time, just not because you're less than, because you're sick. No, and this this is where we talk about the power of lowered expectations. You, I, I'm, you know, I'm always turning everything everybody says into little conversations I imagine them having in their head. And so what I had from what your, your story just then, Patrick, there was a time where sort of the wiser part of yourself uh, is, is sitting down with your feeling sickly self and says, okay, well, well what's something you can do? And, and, and you say, well, I can, I can pick up little things and I can walk, I can go up and down slowly and I can look stupid. And so the wiser self says, let's do that. You know, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do some of that. Go, go with what you can. It's like, okay, well, I'm not going to do so good. And it's like, you know, you, what you've done is rather than have the expectation up so high that you can't reach it, you bring the expectation down, which scares the crap out of people, by the way. When you tell them to lower expect, you, you, Alan, you and I talk about this all the time. It's like it's like the power of lowered expectations. It's like no, that's how you get things done is by breaking things down into little, you know, the, the baby steps. You know, it's it's like it's all through all, you know, and the twelve steps don't don't have a corner on the market because anything that is any process or any any organization they're uh, teaching that is showing you how to get from from one place to another, they're always going to break it down. Yeah, it's very important. Yep. Well, I hope I'm in lucky enough mo- in the moment. What can I do now? What's yep. what's true for me right now? Yeah, well, I could use uh, the practice. I mean, I think what you guys said about practice in the beginning, um, you yeah. know, you guys have been at this a while. And I think that like the results are evident. You know, I mean, you guys, I think he you, just, you've done all this. You know, did he just tell us we were old? Did he just say that? <laughs> he, he, he brings it up a lot. Does it's like, it <laughs> do I- it's our producer. <laughs> and he's telling us that we're old curmudgeons. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, well in, in, in fairness, we probably should we, we, we probably should stop referring to him as the punk. But it's well, like <laughs> hey, it's in my opinion, in my opinion, it's much cooler to be Obi-Wan than Luke. That's good. No. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I like, no, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what both to tell you the truth. <laughs> right. Well, no, I think the the, the thing that I appreciate when Pat sometimes when Patrick does that is is that he uh, and we've had some experiences with that uh, a few times on the podcast where where he will imbue us with 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 powers that are beyond ours. And it's like <laughs> because, because we're older, you know, and, and because we're re- relatively articulate about this stuff. It's like, you know, he's, he's he'll say, well, I'm glad, you know, you guys probably don't have this issue. And we're going like, what? You know, it's like you should have been here yesterday. So it's you know, I always want people to know. And that doesn't mean it's not false humility either. It's like it's not like saying, you know, if, if we didn't and I think I can say this for all three of us, if, if we didn't feel like we had something if we didn't if, if we didn't feel like we had something to share if we didn't feel like we were you know ahead of some people on the path as we go along not as not as a competition but just as a process we wouldn't be here to do this we wouldn't we wouldn't do what we do one of the things i'm getting today from this conversation is one more time that word humility becomes a key component to talking about another subject which is present moment being in the present moment I, I'm smiling over here because I, I you know, I, I had some time, rarely do I have time like this to just kind of hang out and, and watch um, like some Marvel things, but Marvel, the guys at Marvel are incredibly creative, right? Mm-hmm. They they do these things on, on the Disney plus channel where they're called Marvel. I think they're called one shot. Mm-hmm. And so they'll take a character and they'll, they'll pull them out of the role that they're typically in and they'll, They'll spin off in some direction. So the one I was watching yesterday that's I think might be apropos. We'll find out. Maybe I'm just mm-hmm. okay. I'm having a moment right now, a senior moment. And you guys can tell mm-hmm. me if I am. But it was with Thor, um, with this guy by the name of Daryl. So he mm-hmm. called it Team Daryl or something like this. Mm-hmm. So so the spin-off is 
Thor was upset that uh, Iron Man and Captain America didn't reach out for him to him to help them with the conflict they were having in Civil War. Right. When they got mm-hmm. polarized with each other. Right. And Iron Man wanted him, had expectations and Captain America had expectations mm-hmm. they're fighting about. It. And Thor was really hurt. His feelings were hurt that they didn't bring him in to talk with him about this whole thing and stuff like that. So he just withdrew and he decided that he's just going to move. He decided to move to Australia and find a roommate a normal guy because he just wanted to live with someone normal right he's going to change his whole world because i love this already he couldn't deal <laughs> with his expectation right so here you got thor being interviewed right so somebody's coming in and interviewing thor he says yeah you know i just I, you know this whole thing happened and i've decided that i had to change my friends and stuff like that and i found this guy daryl and they go over mm-hmm. to daryl and he's this you know normal guy that's now got thor <laughs> <laughs> living with him right his roommate and so yeah his roommate so you know <laughs> thor is trying he says i've just decided i'm going to live a normal life but it's back to this thing you can't help being but who you are right mm-hmm. so he wants to live a normal life but but daryl is doing everything for him right daryl has to clean up thor's playing those little connect the four dots and he gets frustrated and takes his what's the hammer called you'll near um, Mjolnir out and smashes the thing. And Daryl says, you know, Thor just doesn't get it. And this has been in the family for a long time. And he accommodates. And then Daryl turns to him and says, you know, Thor, we got to pay bills. And he and Daryl, you know, Thor says, well, bills, do we have to do it now? We can do it later. So, and he says, Thor thinks in terms of centuries, not in terms of weeks. <laughs> it's great. It's you just see this clash of, of right. These worlds coming together. Mm-hmm. And um, so finally Thor says, okay, all right, I'll solve this problem. So he puts an ad out and he gets a servant. (laughs) He hires a servant and he's going over to job responsibilities with the servant. He says, I want you to get a job and pay my bills. (laughs) That's part of the, (laughs) that's great. Such a great, I mean, it's a great parody. And so finally Thor moves out, right? Because it's not working for him. And Daryl has got to go. Yeah. <laughs> Daryl runs an ad in, in Craigslist or something like that for a new roommate. And Jeff um Gold Goldblum, is that his name? Yeah, Jeff Goldblum. Mm-hmm. Jeff Goldblum responds to the ad and he is God, what was his name? He's something like master of the universe or something. And he moves in mm-hmm. and he's worse than Thor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was hilarious, right? But if you guys get a chance, you want some all right, all right. And at the same time, a confrontation with these expectations, mm-hmm. right? And 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 having a hard time living with the now because if if I place all my demands that the now is supposed to look a certain way, it's mm-hmm. deadly. Mm-hmm. You know, we're talking about that with you, Patrick. You know, if you come into it saying it's got to look like this, then I'm not going to be able to cope well with what it is. Mm-hmm. This is this is the lesson in emotional sobriety that I think may be one of the most important lessons is that when, as you said it, Tom, when we align ourselves with the reality of what mm-hmm. is, meaning who I am at that given time, the mm-hmm. situation I'm in, the reality of that situation, the resources available or not available, when mm-hmm. I can align myself with all of that, then I can have the best response available to the time. And yeah. most of the time, it's not going to look like anything that I thought it would. I think one of the things that we can emphasize here that that is is does not naturally come in the way we think about it is honest, healthy self-criticism. Sometimes, sometimes we talk about so much negative self-criticism or unfair self-criticism that sometimes we we almost we we almost take the meaning out of actual the word criticism, which was, we need to be part of being emotion in emotional sobriety is to be good at critiquing ourselves, to be honest and and to be, to be self-critical. It's like, so that's why I make the distinction between self-criticism and self-condemnation. It's like, because condemnation is basically there to, 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 it's like, it doesn't matter. The the opinion is always going to be the same, no matter what I did, it was bad, but self-criticism helps, helps us improve. And so the idea of being in the present moment includes very often as human beings being aware of how we are are seeing ourselves as maybe coming up short it's like okay 
it's like, and, and I mean, one of the most important things we can possibly do, certainly in my life has been the case where I can actually acknowledge that whether, whether uh, my wife is, has pointed something out to me that's true and I don't need to be defensive, but then later, even how I can do the same thing. I, I, that wiser part of me can come in and say, like, like Tom, you know, you're not really doing everything you can do here. It's like, you're, you know, there's, you've got some work to do on this stuff. And for that other part of me to be able to sit and listen with, with humility and, and say, okay, I, I can do better. And, but it, but it's not like I'm doing that. So I will then move to having, having healthy self-esteem like you were talking about, Alan. No, healthy self-esteem is what happens when you're doing it. Yeah, that's right. In that moment. Yeah. Yeah. In seeing I'm learning. That- and look, I'm learning. Right. I'm learning. I'm seeing that, you know, that what I'm doing now, how I'm dealing with this is, is working for me. I feel good about it. See, then, then you get, then, then you get that feedback from the experience you're having that, wow, I feel good about how I have dealt with this situation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you let go of all the shoulds. It was it, just a, a very minute example of that. Yesterday we were dropping off Maddie. And it was kind of a hectic morning. I take the girls to, to uh, they have a tennis lesson on 9.30 to 10.30. And then Maddie has tutoring from 11 on. And Jess, we had to drop the car off and all this other stuff to get, mm-hmm. you know, the smog check and stuff like that. Registration's coming up. So we pick her up and she rushed out of the house and she forgot to bring these worksheets that she needed to bring to the tutor to have, you know, help to get Maddie some help with these things. And so she's going, and she's going, oh my God, how could I forget that? And she said that stuff. And I said, well, wait a minute. Is your mom home? She goes, yeah. She could take a picture of the worksheets mm-hmm, and text them mm-hmm, over to you. Mm-hmm. We could text them over to her. Mm-hmm. She goes, oh God, yes, we could do that. So see, it's like she would have shown up, beaten herself up over that she forgot about it mm-hmm. and lost sight of another possibility. Mm-hmm. And see, this is what happens. And you and I can't ex- express this mm-hmm. enough. Mm-hmm. When you get into condemning yourself and faulting yourself for who you're not, you cannot mm-hmm. see what you can do at that particular point in mm-hmm. time to solve mm-hmm. the problem. And so your solving problem capability drops to zero, not because mm-hmm. it is zero. It's because you're focusing on who you're right. not and not what you can do. One interesting point about that, that I, that I made to a, a client not too long ago is when you talk about, and this is, this will apply if it's your, if your, if your inner saboteur, inner culprit is your eating disorder or your addiction or your self uh, condemnation, whatever it is. But what I say is, you know, one of the reasons we need to be able to in recovery in our, in our, uh, uh, all all branches of recovery, including emotional sobriety, is we need to be able to do that. Is because for these 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 saboteurs in our head, they're always focused on the present moment. They, you know, I think I use my ex- alcoholism as an example. My alcoholism does never is never worried about whether I'm going to drink tomorrow. Yeah. They're never, they're, you know, it's like it's if, if if he wants to get me back, he he only wants to talk me into it right now. And that's it. And that's all he ever was. As a matter of fact, when I, back in the days when I was still drinking and battling back at the, knowing I needed to quit, he, he never made, he never made the argument that, that, Oh, I, I know that's not true. What he said is not today. Yeah. You know? So, and, 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 and so what happens, what you're talking about is that condemning voice comes in and it is so focused in the present moment that when we go with it, then we're in this really dark, dark, and, and, and not and, and a very inaccurate view of ourselves in that present moment. The idea there is we need to know that enough to where we can say part of our practice is to, to, you know, break, break out of that. I call it do the, the cartoon shake off, you know, wait a minute. It's like, you know, this is not right. I've got to find another way to do it. And, and I love what you just said, Alan, because what that does is it takes you to a place where you can step back into problem solving. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly what. And you can, and that's one of the things you, that's, you can only do problem solving from the present moment. And, and this is where I love the wisdom of Virginia Satir. Mm. She was one of my Obi-Wan Kenobi's. Patrick. Yeah. Um, she said, life is what it is. It's how you cope with it. That counts. Mm-hmm. See, and that she got that. It's the coping that 
you know, that's the important thing. And our coping gets diminished when we're into shooting on ourselves, when we're into, you know, putting on this expectation that we should be someone we're not and trying to live up to this idea rather than, you know, being authentic and, and you know, standing for who we are and then dealing with it. Because like I said, there, there's so many possibilities that we can't see when we're condemning ourselves. Yep, exactly. That's huge. Yeah. Well, God, this has been great fun, man. So listen, Tom, it's so good to have you back, man. It warms me. I miss you guys. We missed you too, man. I'm just glad I was worried about you and Dee. I'm glad you guys are okay. I appreciate you guys both checking in on me. Yeah, how is she? She's doing good. She's doing good. She, uh, uh, um, yeah. You know, it's interesting. We both had kind of different residual stuff, but she, she, uh, uh, she, she's had she held on to the cough a little longer. I held on to the headache, and uh, but but uh, um, uh, testing negative now. So we're 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 back among the living. There you go. You know, you just reminded me. The headache was one of the worst things that I experienced through the whole thing. Yeah, it I was. Just- a- Splitting headache like I've never had. No, I, I, I had a little bit of that when I was right in the middle of it, but, but that, even afterwards, it was like it was, it was kind of this dull, you know, get on my nerves headache. Listen, that so, so I don't, I don't envy you that because, because you can't ignore I mean, the things that happen in your head. You can't ignore. You can't ignore, man. <laughs> you really can't. All right, guys. So, so it'll be right. next week. It's, it's good to reconnect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's Wonderful. do it again. Yeah, let's do this again <laughs> next week. Yeah. Wonderful. We'll, we'll see you guys next week. And uh, right. I just want to say that uh, between uh, Thor and Jeff Goldblum, I'd pick Thor because, um, you know, the bathroom might not be in as good a shape and you might be missing some things from the fridge. But just in terms of like personality, Thor all the way. <laughs> hey, it was so funny. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum, he had this this staff. And if people didn't do what he wanted, he could melt them. And that they were putting a band together to record some music for their videos. And this one guy wasn't playing some of the notes that he thought he should play. And he melted them. <laughs> Tinge your life. Tinge your myth. Cultivate your narrative with whomever you're with. Then with glass in hand and children on one knee. Bring some stories. Bring your stories back to me. It ain't a crime to be a human Never be ashamed to be yourself Rest assured that whatever you're doing Will entertain me like nobody else So here's to us, my old friends Until it's time to drink the wine and break the bread again With glass in hand and children on one Bring some stories, bring your stories back to me.